placement vector can be continued and defined position vector as vector r then we defined displacement vector in its resolved form so there were two points point p1 and point p2 the position vector of point p1 was r1 and the position vector of point p2 was vector r2 we displaced an object placed at point p1 to point p2 using this displacement vector s and found out the values of displacement vector the components of displacement vector were found out using this formula that x2 minus x1 in the i cap direction y2 minus y1 in the j cap direction z2 minus z1 in the k cap direction we used this and found out the position uh, sorry displacement vector which was used to displace an object placed at point p1 to the point p2 right then we solved two questions based upon the concept of distance and displacement one was the old man and this one monkey problem right then we continued and solved this problem here we found out the distance and the displacement by the boy yeah, boy started from home carried out some maneuvers and then reached at the school so we found out the value of distance and displacement now in today's class we will continue to the concept of speed and velocity right so firstly we will define what is speed what is speed so sorrow can you help me out what is speed we have already studied it in ninth class what is speed or maybe any other student just raise your hand if you know what is speed sulfikar debut it's your first class beta rate of change of displacement uh we i am asking about speed speed samrat is also you are, i believe it's your first class i believe pujita hai arini sri can you guys unmute guys you have to participate in the class rate of change of displacement with respect to rate of change of displacement with respect to guys you have to participate in the class saurabh are you there hello are you there okay i will teach you right if you don't want to participate then it's your choice but you have to answer the question when i will be asking you questions and then you have to answer otherwise it's not acceptable so uh sulfikar help me out that speed is distance upon time right rate of change of distance up with respect to time it is speed and similarly velocity is rate of change of displacement with respect to time right whether distance is a scalar quantity or vector quantity scalar is a scalar distance is a scalar quantity and time time is it a scalar quantity or vector quantity scalar scalar quantity right so time is also a scalar quantity do you feel that time has a direction time has a direction or not no no why time always move from past to future na like forward moving direction so time has a direction but it's a scalar quantity okay v velocity in the velocity displacement is a vector quantity or a scalar quantity vector vector quantity and time is a scalar quantity scalar right so displacement divided by time is velocity so velocity will be a vector, vector. quantity vector quantity and speed is a scalar quantity scalar. right so speed is a scalar quantity and velocity is a vector quantity so distance per unit time is speed and displacement per unit time is velocity right 
so in yesterday's class we discussed that distance can be positive zero and negative can distance have a negative value no sir distance can be negative or not not no distance can never be negative because the minimum length of the path can be zero there is no negative length of the path right so distance can only take positive or zero values distance can be can be positive or zero and what about displacement beta displacement can displacement be negative or not sir so, okay negative can be negative zero or positive so displacement can take either negative value zero or positive values so we, we now we will derive conclusion for speed and velocity right so since distance can only be positive or zero what we can say about speed speed can also be either positive or zero we want we will not be having any value of speed that is negative so speed can only take positive values or zero value and velocity since velocity is displacement per unit time and displacement can be negative positive or zero so we can say that for velocity it can be positive negative or zero so velocity can take negative values also positive values and zero value right we discuss that velocity is a vector quantity speed is a scalar quantity so these are the basic salient differences between the speed and velocity now going forward we will characterize velocity into two things the first one is well average velocity right it is average velocity and instantaneous velocity right since the names itself says that average velocity what we can say about average velocity it is the velocity averaged over a time interval it is the average velocity velocity averaged over a time interval right we are looking at the displacement between two different time intervals at t final and t initial so it is averaged over the time interval between t initial and t final suppose there is an object suppose there is an object placed at an initial position i this object moves towards the right and arrive at a final position f so during this motion during this motion it displaces itself right this is the displacement vector s and at initial position maybe t is time is ti then time increases to tf when it reaches to the final position f right and we can find out that average velocity during this time interval from ti to tf you can say that average velocity is equal to change in displacement what is change in displacement maybe this ti and tf are placed on a cartesian coordinate system like we can draw it like this and there is two vectors the first one is for the point 1 that r1 vector r initial vector and r2 is for final rf so these are two vectors right now we can say that vector s is rf minus ri so displacement vector can be written as rf minus ri and time interval is tf minus ti so we can write it as position vector of the final point minus position vector of the initial point divided by tf minus ti right so this is the average velocity averaged over the time interval between ti and tf right and if you want to find out instantaneous velocity then the name itself says that instant at a particular point of time right at a particular instant of time so this is at any particular time this is at any particular time so earlier we were talking about interval of time what was that interval the time between tf and ti so it was averaged over this time interval and hence we called it as average velocity but in instantaneous velocity we are talking about a particular instant of time at a particular time 
may be we can say that at t equals to 2 seconds if i ask you that tell me the velocity at t equals to 2 second then what will what the type of velocity it will be it will be called as instantaneous velocity at the time instant t equals to 2 second and if i ask you that give me the velocity of this object between time intervals t equals to 2 seconds and t equals to 4 seconds so there will be an average velocity corresponding to this time interval between 4 seconds and 2 seconds so then i have to calculate average velocity and if i ask for a particular time stamp then it is instantaneous velocity so you got the difference na if you agree give me a thumbs up give me a thumbs up if you understood the concept yeah you can also ask doubts if you have any particular doubt right we got the test of this instantaneous velocity now we will define the formula for this right yeah see v we can write v velocity at a particular instant is equal to limit of delta t tending to zero delta s by delta t so in this formula we say that this delta t is approximately zero so the change in time like the time interval for which we are looking we are taking reading is approximately zero then it is called as at that particular instant so we will take that t equals to 2 second example only and i say that while this object is moving from initial position to final position the initial time t is equal to 0 seconds and final time t is equal to 4 seconds and if i say that during this motion from initial to final position give me the value of velocity at t equals to 2 seconds so this object while moving from initial to final position it will cross this t equals to 2 second at some this cross this point at t equals to 2 second right what i will do i will take a time interval just before t equals to 2 second maybe at t equals to 1.999 seconds and another time interval just after t equals to 2 second that is t equals to maybe 2.001 seconds so this time interval that we are talking about this delta t delta t is it small or large is it small time interval or large time interval delta t small time interval what is delta t is 2.001 minus 1.999 so its value will be around 0.002 Seconds. So, zero point zero zero two second is a small value or a large value? It's a very small value, and that is what we are saying that this delta t is approximately zero. So, what we are doing here is, is like we are trying to find out the velocity of this object at t equals to two second, and how we are finding it by taking two readings. One is just before two seconds, and another one is just after the. t equals to 2 seconds right so we are taking these two values and then we are putting the values in the formula for velocity what what is that formula that delta s by delta t but this delta t has to be very small this has to be approximately zero so we will put the values maybe Uh, at t equals to two second, the position changes from like maybe two meters, two point zero zero one meters to one point nine nine. So we can change these value, otherwise it will be confusing. Right? So at t equals to two second, maybe the position, the value is x is equal to five meters, right? So just before uh, t equals to two second, the value may be four point nine nine eight meters, and just after t equals to 2 second the value may be 5.002 meters and delta t is 2.001 minus 1.999 we will calculate this value and the what the value that we will get is instantaneous velocity at t equals to 2 seconds so we are minimizing this time interval in which we are taking the readings and then we are eventually finding out the values so we can write the formula for t instantaneous velocity and instantaneous velocity and average velocity we can write these two formulas the first one is this one and the second one is this one just write them down in your notebook
then we will be solving some questions Have you noted the formulas? Just raise the hand. The students which are in the class, just raise your hands. Just raise your hands so that I can get to know that who all are there. Okay. The student who are able to hear me, just raise your hands. So, beta, you have to participate, na? Sulfikar Gur, Gurmanat Kaur, Debut Paul, Yuvraj Singh. So, if if there is no background noise in your uh, home, just keep yourself unmute so that we can I I can get to know that you are understanding the concept. Hmm. And you find difficulty in English only, so we can continue in English or maybe in Hindi. Right? Just let me know. Have you noted down these formulas? Yes. Right. So we will solve this question. Let's read this question and try to find out. Velocity is equal to displacement upon time. Right? And average velocity is equal to total displacement total time. Sir, first option. Have you solved it, Vita? Option first. Yes, sir. For Mannat Kaur, right. Sulfika, you solved it? No, sir. You raise your hand. Have you doubt? Have you any doubt? Right. So how we are going to proceed with this problem is, we will read it. Right, a body moves in a straight line with velocity v1 for one third of the time, and for remaining time for v2. Right. So there is no value of time given in this question. There is no value given. So what we will do is. We will assume that let the time be equal to t. Total time is equal to t. Right? We will just simplify it. Let total time is equal to is equal to t. 
so one third of the time will be one third of time is equal to t by three, and remaining time is equal to two t by three. Remaining time is equal to total time minus one third of the time. That is two by three t, right? Hmm. Now we have to find out average velocity. Average velocity we know that total displacement upon total time. We know that total time is equal to t. We know that denominator of this problem is total time, which is t. But we don't know total displacement. So how can we find out displacement by using this formula? Displacement is equal to velocity into time. So for the first half of the motion, what actually is happening? A a body is moving along a straight line. So there is a body. and it is moving along a straight line right and reaches some point it carries out uh, v1 velocity for one third of the time so maybe one third of the time it it reaches at some point and during this motion the velocity of the object is the time taken is t by 3 the remaining time is 2 by 3t and initially the velocity here is v1 and here it is v2 so we have to find out the displacement from point 1 to 2 and then 2 to 3 so while moving from 1 to 2 the displacement is velocity into time so what is the velocity v1 and what it the time taken during uh, with velocity v1 is t by 3 then from 2 to 3 what is velocity v2 and time is 2 by 3 t right so this is the average velocity v average v average is equal to total displacement which is v1 into t by 3 plus v2 into 2 t by 3 and total time is t that we have assumed this right now we will take t as common from the numerator and then cancel out it with the denominator so t into v1 by 3 plus 2v2 by 3 and the denominator t so we can cancel out these t and the final answer will be that v average is equal to v1 by 3 plus 2 by 3 v2 so this is our final answer which option is this option number a v1 by 3 plus 2v2 by 3 have you understood this but have you understood this is there any doubt in this problem no sir so we can proceed to the next problem if you have any doubt you can ask pujita have you solved this one pujita samrat samarth sorry samarth Samarth, have you solved this one? Yuvraj, Yuvraj Singh, Debut Paul, have you solved this one, beta? can we proceed to the next problem so this is the next problem that you can solve to we'll start solving it sir b option 18 meter per second very good beta very good sir b okay pujita debut sulfikar
so we have learned about in this question we have to find out instantaneous velocity right the displacement of a particle is given by x is equal to 4t square plus 2t so we, we are provided with the displacement function as x is equal to 4t square plus 2t right here we have to find out instantaneous velocity so we can recap recapitulate the formula of instantaneous velocity what was the formula that v is equal to limit of delta t tending to 0 delta s by delta t and here it, it comes out to be ds by dt but here we are provided with displacement function as x so we can simply write it as that v is equal to dx by dt we will differentiate x with respect to time so what will be the value of differentiation 4t square differentiated with respect to t is 8t and then differentiation of 2t is 2 so this is the velocity function v is equal to 8t plus 2 right and we have to find out instantaneous velocity at t equals to 2 seconds so we, we will find it the value of v at t equals to 2 seconds and we will substitute value of t as 2 so what will we will do 8 into 2 plus 2 8 into 2 is 16 and then add 2 into it so it will be 18 meters per second so like in this way we can find out the value of instantaneous velocity and the option b is the right answer 18 meter per second right have you understood this one better ujita debut Yuvraj, have you understood this one better? Gurmanath Kaur? Yes, sir. De Debut and uh, Pujita, just unmute yourself and give me your like basic introduction from where you are, how you are feeling in the class, so that we can continue better. Debut, unmute and tell me something. From where you are better? From Tirupura. From Tirupura. Okay. <laughs> And Pujita? Pujita? Just unmute, beta. From where? Karnataka. Karnataka, okay. So are you getting the concepts or not? Yes, sir. You are understanding the problems, na? And debut you? Yes, I understood. Yeah, okay. So you may feel these problems are very simple ones, but we can continue with them. Right? Okay. Now we have learned about the velocity. And likewise, we, we also can characterize average speed and instantaneous speed. So average speed is the speed averaged over a time interval from t initial to t final and instantaneous speed is at any particular time instant so it, it is the same thing that average speed is equal to total distance covered divided by total time taken and instantaneous speed is limit of delta t tending to 0 delta s by delta t so we can write this instantaneous speed also as v is equal to ds by dt there is a significant change here so this is the same formula but the arrowhead is missing and if there is no arrowhead we can say that it is speed not velocity so speed instantaneous speed is equal to ds by dt so we are only concerned about the magnitude part of it and not the direction right so this is the same thing instantaneous speed is defined at a particular time step and average speed is calculated over a time interval so if we are taking the values over a time interval then it is termed as average speed and if you are taking the value at any particular time instant then it is called as instantaneous speed both average speed and instantaneous speed are scalar quantities since speed itself is distance divided by time so we already already concluded it that speed is a scalar quantity right 
so we will be solving this problem based upon the concept of field it is a similar problem but with a different aspect to it right so read it and try to solve this one speed is equal to distance upon Sir, B option zero point eight three kilometer per hour. Option number B. Gur Gurmanath, you answered it. Yes, sir. Yes. So option B is the right answer. Very good, beta. Okay. Yuvraj, are you solving? Sulfikar, Pujita. Sir, ho gaya. Ho gaya. Pujita, Debut, Sulfikar. so a boy starts a distance covers a distance ab of 2 km with a speed of 2.5 km per hour right so initial position is this one and final position is this one what is the distance between these two points according to question it is 2 km right this is 2 km from a to b right we will term them a and b right this is a this one is b so the boy starts from a reaches b covers this 2 km distance with a speed of 2.5 km per hour so in the forward motion the speed is 2.5 km per hour while returning from b to a the speed given is 0.5 km per hour right so in the forward motion it is 2.5 km per hour and in the backward it is 0.5 km per hour can we calculate the time taken in forward motion time is equal to distance upon speed so this is the time for forward motion and it will be in hours and the backward motion is tf and t b we can assume that it is t b what is the time required is distance upon speed so it will be 4 hours now we have to find out average speed so average speed is equal to what is average speed total distance covered divided by total time taken so we know that total distance is 2 km for the forward motion and another 2 km for the backward motion and the total time is 2 divided by 2.5 plus 4 so here we can say it is as 4 divided by 
2 divided by 2.5 is 0 0.8 plus 4. So the value is 4 divided by 4.8 meter, sorry, kilometers per hour. So the value will be less than 1 or greater than 1, 4 divided by 4.8. Whether it will be less than 1 or greater than 1? It will be less than yes. 1, 4 divided by 4. Point. There is only one option which is less than 1. So option B is the right answer. That is 0 0.83. All the other three options that is choice A, C and D are greater than 1. So we can safely say that the option B is the right answer. Right. Okay. We will solve this question. Position of a particle as a function of time is given as this. Find the velocity and acceleration of the particle at t equals to 2 seconds. Position of a particle as a function of time is given as this. Find the velocity and acceleration. So we have not learned what is acceleration, but we can find out velocity. And if you can find out acceleration also, then it's also very good. Since we have learned it in the 11th class, so you may be in the Sir, velocity maybe. 24 meter per second and acceleration 10 meter per second square. 10 meter per second. So very good. I think both of your answers are correct. Shabas beta. Position of a particle as a function of time is given as you made just one mistake. I will let you know, Gurmandat. I will just correct you a little bit. Numerically, the values are correct. Right. So the displacement is x is equal to 5t square plus 4t plus 3. We know that the velocity at any time stamp, velocity at a particular time is called as instantaneous velocity. So we have to find out instantaneous velocity. So instantaneous velocity is ds by dt and in this case it is x so we can find out dx by dt so we will differentiate and find the value 5t square differentiated is 10t 4t differentiated is 4 so 10t plus 4 so this is velocity and if we need to find out the velocity value at t equals to 2 seconds then we can write it as 10 into 2 plus 4 so it is 24 and what is acceleration? Acceleration is dv by dt, rate of change of velocity with respect to time or d square x by dt square. So what we will do? We will differentiate velocity function with respect to time. So what is velocity? 10t plus 4. We will differentiate 10t plus 4 with respect to time. So 10t differentiated is 10 and 4 differentiated is 0. So acceleration is 10, right? But numerically, uh, Gurmanath, numerically your answers were right, 24 and 10. But can we write it as meter per second or meters per second square? Can we write them like this? Do you find any unit for displacement in the question? Do you find any unit given? No, sir. No, I know. So in the earlier question, it was explicitly mentioned that the displacement is in meters, right? X is equal to 4t square plus 2 in meters. It was explicitly mentioned. So we can safely say that this is the answer, meter per second. But in this very particular question, we can see that displacement function is given as this and no units are mentioned there. So in this case, what we can do? We can use at unit per second or maybe we can just simply write unit. We can just simply write 24 units of velocity obviously and that is 10 units of acceleration. So we can write it like this. Have you understood Gurmanath? Yes sir. Yeah. Sir, can we write I cap over here? Uh, I cap. Yes, yes, obviously. Why? Because the values are positive in magnitude, right? 
and we are displacing in x direction so this x indicates that we are displacing in positive x direction if the value comes out to be positive then we are definitely moving in positive x direction and t at t equals to 0 if we want to find out the starting point of the motion what we can say we will put the values at t is equal to 0 so the first term will become 0 second term will also become 0 and it will be starting at 3 so we, we, if we want to plot this thing so the motion starts at x is equal to 3 right so oh, if we displacement and time so this is 1 2 and 3 the motion starts from this 3 at t equals to 0 the object is at 3 right at t equals to 1 what will be the value 5 plus 4 plus 3 so it will be 9 plus 3 9 plus 3 is 12 so maybe somewhere here then again you know, like we can connect the dots and plot the motion so we can not write actually we cannot write this thing we cannot write x direction we cannot write uh, i cap because this x is uh, signifying not exactly x but displacement right beta okay sir so we cannot say that otherwise they can mention it here so if we plot that we know that it is in a single direction since we are learning about motion in a straight line so that that straight line can be in any direction right and if it is mentioned that we are moving along horizontally or maybe x then we can write it as i cap okay and for that matter any unit vector like uh, if we are using all the three axes, then we can we generally use i cap j cap. Otherwise, we just use any unit vector, unit vector in any arbitrary direction. Maybe like we learned about the position vector r, na. So r cap can also be a unit vector, na. So we can like use that vector r divided by magnitude of vector r. So we cannot definitely say that, but if you are assuming that we are working on x axis then you can write okay now we will learn about graphical interpretation of velocity right so from here you will learn more about that thing so focusing on this graph on horizontal axis what we are seeing it is time time is plotted with position position is plotted on vertical axis and time is on horizontal axis and the plot is a straight line this plot is a straight line this is a straight line so this is a straight line so we can say that for a given interval of time like maybe from t i to t final for a given interval of time there is a corresponding change in position of the object so this is delta x and this is delta t if we take another time interval of same width this is also delta t so we will be finding that the the corresponding change in the position will also be equal to delta x so from here we can conclude that since this is a straight line and the slope of the graph right we can highlight the triangles here the first one is this one and the second one is this one here in these two triangles the angles theta they are equal these angles are equal that means slope is equal to constant and obviously we know that for a straight line slope is constant this is theta from here we know that that since the slope is constant and slope of xt graph is slope of xt graph is slope of xt graph is we know that from mathematics m is equal to 10 theta we know that m is slope and that is equal to 10 theta 
in this triangle what is tan theta delta x by delta t and what is delta x by delta t it is velocity so on an xt graph the slope is velocity and if the slope is constant that means it is a constant velocity motion so if this if you find a straight line on xt graph we can safely conclude that it is a constant velocity motion right and if the slope is changing if the slope is changing then it the velocity of the object is changing at every instant of time maybe at t equals to 0 at t equals to 0 at some other time interval like we will take time interval this one at some time interval t is equal to maybe 1 second and at another time interval maybe t equals to 1.2 seconds so at in these two at these two time intervals the slope is different na this is point 1 this is point 2 so at point 1 and point 2 slope is different we know that at point 1 slope is this one tangent to any curve is slope so at point 1 the slope is theta 1 and at point 2 slope is theta 2 right slope is ten, tangent of theta 1 and here the slope is tangent of theta 2 so which theta is greater whether theta 2 is greater or theta 1 is greater theta 2 theta 2 is larger in magnitude so theta 2 is greater than theta 1 from here we know that that theta 2 is greater than theta 1 hence the slope at point 2 is greater than slope at point 1 or maybe m2 slope is at greater than this so we can say that velocity at point 2 is greater than velocity at point 1 so it is increasing velocity at slope on xt graph if it is changing then the velocity of the object is changing right okay so we will try to solve this question this one here we have to find out four things in this question we have to find out four things i'm just making some correction the first point is 10 second one is 20 and this is 30 we have to find out average velocity at between t equals to 2 second and 4 seconds average velocity between t equals to 4 seconds and 6 seconds and then instantaneous speed at 1 second and t goes to 3 seconds so average speed not velocity average speed between time intervals 2 seconds and 4 seconds then again into time interval 4 second and 6 second and then instantaneous speed at t goes to 1 second and t goes to 3 seconds and we know that what is average speed it is the slope between those time intervals sir average speed for both the intervals is 5 meter per second between the time intervals 2 and 4 yes sir for both the intervals 2 and 4 and 4 and 6 2 and 4 and 4 and 6 yes okay between 2 and 4 i think you are right but between 4 and 6 between 4 and 6 the displacement is changing or fixed the value of x is fixed uh, changing or not between t equals to 4 and 
not changing. And if the position of the object is not changing, that means the object is at rest. Rest. And if the object is at rest, then the velocity or the speed is zero. Right. So between four and t equals to four seconds and six seconds, the speed is zero. Between two and four, you have to find out. Between t equals to two and t equals to four, just find the slope of the line. After solving this question, we will conclude our today's class. So what we will do, we will try to find out the slope between time interval t equals to 2 second and t equals to 4 second. So we, we will find out the slope of this green line segment, right? So at t equals to 2 seconds, we will draw an intercept on vertical axis. What is the value of displacement? 10. And at 4 second displacement is 30. So we have to find out V average. V average is total displacement upon total time. So final displacement is 30 and initial is 10 and time is 4 minus 2. So it is 20 divided by 2. So what is the value? 10 meters per second. 10 meter per second is the average velocity between t equals to 2 second and 4 seconds. Right, beta, Gurmanath. Yes, sir. Have you understood this thing? Or should I yes, repeat sir. it? No, sir, understood. Understood, right? And between t equals to 4 seconds and 6 seconds, what is the initial displacement at, at 4 seconds? Displacement is 30. And at 6, it is also 30. So displacement is not changing between t equals to 4 seconds and 6 seconds. So what is the V average? Final displacement minus initial displacement, final time minus initial time. So 30 minus 30 is 0, 0 by 2 is 0. So average velocity between 4 and 6 is 0. 0 velocity, right? Then uh, what we have to find out? We have to find out, find the instantaneous speed at t equals to 1 second and t equals to 3 seconds. 
वन सेकेंड एंड टी गोज टू थ्री सेकेंड सो वी विल फोकस हेयर थ्री लाइज बिटवीन फोर एंड थ्री लाइज बिटवीन फोर एंड टू एंड वी नो दैट एवरेज वेलॉसिटी बिटवीन टू एंड फोर इज इन दिस रीजन एवरेज वेलॉसिटी इज टेन मीटर पर सेकेंड वाई वी कैलकुलेटेड द स्लोप ऑफ दिस लाइन सेगमेंट वी कैलकुलेटेड द स्लोप ऑफ दिस this line and this the slope is constant throughout that means at every instant starting from t equals to 2 second and ending at t equals to 4 second at every instant in between these two time intervals the velocity is constant and the value is 10 meter per second so where 3 lies between t equals to 4 and t equals to 2 since 3 lies here so what will be the instantaneous velocity at t equals to 3 slope of the line segment and what is the slope here if we draw a small triangle at t equals to 3 seconds here if we try to draw a small triangle at this instant we will draw it like this so this will be delta x and this is delta t so what is the slope here slope is same as the slope between t equals to 2 and 4 so the velocity at t equals to the speed at t equals to 3 second is 10 meter per second similarly at t equals to 1 second t equals to 1 second for t equals to 1 second we have to find out the slope of the line between these two points at t equals to 0 and t equals to 2 since the slope is changing at t equals to 2 seconds so we have to find the slope of this particular part of the line so i will highlight it with blue color and then we will try to find out the slope at t equals to 2 we will draw a intercept and the value at t equals to 2 value of displacement at t equals to 2 second is 10 meters at t equals to 0 what is the displacement 0 so the average velocity between t equals to 0 and t equals to 2 is the average is equal to final displacement minus initial displacement divided by final time minus initial time so it is 5 meters per second so the velocity between t equals to 0 and t equals to 2 at every instant in between the velocity is going to be equal to 5 meter per second and since one lies between 2 and 1 so the velocity is 5 meter per second if i ask you gurmanath if i ask you what will be the value of instantaneous velocity at t equals to 1.5 seconds what will be the value 5 meter per second 5 meter per second right why because slope is same throughout slope is same throughout right very good and if i ask you what is the value at 0.7 seconds it will be also 5 meter per 5 second 5 meter per second right so at every instant between t equals to 0 and t equals to 2 the slope is constant so at any time interval between this 2 and 0 the velocity is going to be 5 meter per second only right so yes. you can find out the solution is like the first one is 10 meter the second one is 0 since the velocity is not changing and since the displacement is not changing here the third one is instantaneous velocity so it is 5 meter only and the fourth one is 10 meter right so we can find out these answers if you have any doubt in this particular question ask me gurmanath pujita faizan ali have you guys have solved this question yuvraj any doubts no sir so there is no doubt so can you explain me the second part can you find out the value why why we why why the velocity speed at 1.5 second is 5 meter per second fazan why the speed is 5 meter per second at 1.5 seconds Pujita, have you understood this?
Ujita. Okay, Gurmanath, you have understood this thing, na? Yes, sir. Yes. Okay. So we will conclude our today's class here only, and we will continue from graphical interpretation of velocity. We we covered we covered this question, and we will continue from uniform and non-uniform motion in our tomorrow's class. Right. Okay. Okay, sir.